Welcome to Knowledge 3, Lesson 1. This is Cinderella. Once there was a poor girl who was called Cinderella. Cinderella lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters. Her stepmother was mean to Cinderella and forced her to do the hardest and dirtiest work in the house. The poor girl had to scour the dishes, scrub the floors, and wash the clothes all by herself. And when her work was finally done, Cinderella would sit, tired and alone, by the fireplace among the ashes and cinders. And that's why they called her Cinderella. Cinderella's stepsisters lived in splendor. They had soft beds, thick carpets, and silver-edged mirrors. Poor Cinderella had to sleep on the floor next to the fire. One day, the king's son, a prince, announced that he was going to hold a royal ball at the royal palace. It would be a grand evening of dancing, and all the young ladies in the kingdom were invited. When they heard the announcement, Cinderella's stepsisters shrieked with excitement. For days they primped in front of their mirrors and talked of nothing but the ball. They shouted orders at Cinderella and ran her ragged while they got ready for the ball. Cinderella, shouted the older stepsister, shine my shoes. Cinderella, called the younger, iron out this wrinkle in my dress. So Cinderella helped her stepsisters get ready without complaining. Silently, however, she was longing to go to the ball. She imagined herself dancing in the arms of the prince. How wonderful it would be. And yet, she knew her stepmother would never allow her to go. At last, the time came. The stepsisters and their mother left for the palace. Cinderella watched them drive away. When she lost sight of them, she began to cry. She felt so miserable and alone. But Cinderella was not alone after all. She heard a gentle voice ask, what's the matter, dear? She looked up and saw a woman with a kind face. I wish I, I wish I could, began Cinderella, but she couldn't finish for all her tears and sobbing. You wish to go to the ball, is that it? said the kind woman. Why, yes, said Cinderella with surprise. Then it shall be so. Cinderella, you are a kind girl, worthy of going to the ball, said the woman. For you see, the woman was Cinderella's fairy godmother. Now run into the garden, she said to Cinderella, and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella went to the garden, puzzled. She picked a large pumpkin and set it on the ground before the kind woman. The fairy godmother tapped it with her magic wand and it turned into a dazzling coach lined with satin. Now, dear said the fairy godmother. Bring me the mouse trap from the house. Cinderella brought the trap, which had six live mice in it. The fairy godmother released the mice and waved her wand over them, turning them into a fine set of six gray horses. Then, with a touch of her wand, she turned a big rat into a fat, jolly coachman with long, fancy whiskers. Well said the fairy godmother with a smile. What do you think? Are you pleased? Are you ready to go to the ball? Oh, yes, cried Cinderella. But must I go in these dirty rags? Her godmother laughed. Then, with a touch of her wand, she changed Cinderella's tattered clothes into a glittering gown of gold. And on her feet appeared a pair of glass slippers, the prettiest in the world. Cinderella stepped into the coach, but before she left, her fairy godmother gave her a stern warning. 
Do not stay at the ball after midnight, not even a moment. When the clock strikes 12, the coach will once again be a pumpkin. The horses, mice. The coachman, a rat. And your gown, the same clothes you had on. Cinderella promised she would leave before midnight. Then, calling out her thanks, away she rode in the coach feeling happier than she'd ever felt before. When Cinderella arrived at the ball, everyone admired her beauty. The prince asked Cinderella to dance with him. They danced together once, then twice, then again and again. Cinderella's face shone with happiness. Everyone at the ball looked on in admiration, everyone that is but the two stepsisters. They glared jealously at the lovely lady, though they had no idea that they were glaring at Cinderella because they didn't recognize her in her beautiful gown. For Cinderella, the music, the dancing, the warm gaze of the prince all seemed a wonderful dream. How quickly time slips away when the heart is happy. As Cinderella began to dance again with the prince, she heard the palace clock begin to toll. Oh my, she gasped. What time is it? Midnight, said the prince. Midnight. Oh, Cinderella's cheeks grew pale. She turned and, fast as a deer, ran out of the ballroom. She sprinted down a long hallway, then down a staircase. At the foot of the stairs, she stumbled. One of her slippers fell off. But Cinderella could not stop. As she ran breathlessly out of the castle into the darkness, she heard the clock strike midnight and felt her smooth gown turn into the rough cloth of her everyday clothes. Her dazzling coach had turned back into a pumpkin, so she ran home alone. When she got there, she realized she was still wearing one glass slipper. When Cinderella had run away, the prince had raced after her. Although he didn't catch her, he did find, part way down the staircase, the glass slipper that had fallen off her foot. And that is why, the very next morning, the sound of trumpets woke the kingdom. The prince announced that he would marry the woman whose foot fit the glass slipper. He sent his men out on a mission. They were to try the slipper on the foot of every maiden in the land. From house to house they went, trying the slipper on foot after foot. On one foot the slipper was too long, on another too short. And so it went until they came to the house of Cinderella and her stepsisters. Cinderella's stepsisters tried to fit their feet into the slipper. They squeezed, pinched, and pushed, but the slipper would not fit. Then from the shadows Cinderella stepped forth and said, Let me see if it'll fit me. You, the stepsisters cried, that's ridiculous. Every young woman in the kingdom is supposed to try on the slipper that includes me, stated Cinderella. The prince's men agreed, as the prince had given strict instructions that every maiden in the kingdom was to try on the slipper. One of the men placed the slipper on Cinderella's foot and it fit perfectly. The stepsisters' mouths dropped open in astonishment. They were even more shocked when from her pocket, Cinderella drew forth the other glass slipper. Only then did the stepsisters understand. The beautiful lady they had seen at the ball was Cinderella. They threw themselves at her feet and begged for forgiveness. Cinderella was so kind-hearted that she forgave them and embraced or hugged them. Cinderella married the prince. Her stepmother and stepsisters were invited to live in the palace with her, and she and the prince lived happily ever after.